This week we're in the office working on the truck and I'm going to show you how to make your own custom gaskets like this using your CAD software and the Cut Final Cutter. I got this idea from another YouTube video where a gentleman used a scanner and Photoshop and a couple more art oriented programs to make the gasket. I was curious if there's a way I could just use CAD software and after a little bit of work I was able to do that so I figured I'd share those steps with you. So the first step is to create the gasket. So we're going to draw this up really quickly. I have a couple dimensions, so I'm gonna go ahead and knock that out in Inventor and get it to the point where there's a drawing of it. So I already have the part created and saved under the name that I want. So we're going to draw a bunch of circles, a bunch of flats, and a bunch of arcs and put dimensions to them. We know that this dimension is five and a half inches. And then the rest of these are going to be metric. Alright, there's the gasket. Let's open up the drawing and insert a base view. We'll do one to one. We'll hit OK and there we go. With the drawing saved as a DWG, we need to actually export it as a DXF because the CreeCut software can import DXFs. It's also important to give your part a fixed dimension that you know of in case the scaling is a little bit off for some reason. You can just set that dimension inside of the Cricut software. It's actually called Cricut. And I started that as a joke and I cannot stop saying Cricut. Um, <laughs> but as I was saying, it's important to give your part a clean outside dimension because if you import it and the scaling's a little bit off, instead of trying to figure out what's going on with the scaling inside your DXF files, you can just give the outside dimension in the Cricut software the proper dimension and it'll scale everything accordingly. To save it as a DXF, you do save copy as, a DXF, options, we'll do the newest AutoCAD, we'll do full scale, this is, I'm gonna go ahead and save this as a DXF config file and we will just save it in the same folder. Now with that done, we can start up the Cricut design space. Let's go to new project, go to upload. As you can see, I already have my test part and then the actual part. We're actually gonna delete this. Delete that. Now we're going to upload the DXF. There it is, save, select, insert image. And when you insert it, it should all be black. If it isn't black and it has some of the outlines, you need to go through and modify the settings on your DXF output to be able to have it show everything, all of the layers showing black. If you change your config settings and it doesn't show black lines when you insert it, you need to probably change your geometry a little bit, mess with the fillets, remove them. If that doesn't help, I don't really remember what I did to make this happen. It just, this is what it needs to look like. <laughs> so the first step that we need to do is, as you can see, the top dimension is almost 11 and a half, and we need to scale that down to the correct size. So I believe we gave 162 millimeters with 162 millimeters, we want to paint this dimension 6.377995. Now everything is scaled accordingly. Go ahead and drag it up to the corner and it will reposition it to having tangencies to the top and bottom of the surface. Now to make it the actual shape, you can see that there's all these layers that are actually inside. There's the holes and the inside cutout. 
And what you want to do is you want to splice or slice everything together. So take the two layers you want to slice, shift to select both of them, and then down here in the bottom, which is not shown, down here in the bottom, hit slice. And it'll show you the result and then the old ones. So go ahead and delete these. And if you hide and then show something, it'll show what you want. So just go down the list. Take the slice of result you want and the part from the part number you have and just continue to slice them. Last one. Now we can delete everything except for what we want. We can now save this as the part. And with the design and everything in the Cree cut, we can go over to the vinyl cutter and get that cutting. So let me go set that up on my kitchen table and I'll be back in one second. And here we are in the kitchen. I have my Cricut cutter to the side. I have my computer and I have the gasket material already laid out on the Cricut mat. If you buy the Cricut cutter, and you follow the tutorials, you'll understand exactly what all this does. But basically this is a mat that feeds into the printer that the material is stuck to, and that allows it to cut on. It's kind of like the um, cutting mats that you use with an X-Acto knife. It's just for the Cricut cutter. So I'm gonna move the camera so you can see the printer. I'm gonna record my screen and I will show you the process of loading this up into the printer and then cutting out your gasket. So I just realized I didn't have my camera recording. So you can see part of it's already cut out. Ignore that, we're, st we're starting fresh. On the screen, you hit make it. You can see that the pattern goes a little bit past six and a half on one dimension and six and a half on the other one. And you can see that my material covers seven by 10. So it'll print up in this corner, as you can see and we have enough material to cut the pattern. So we hit continue next, we let it connect. I found that the genuine leather custom material is a good solution for this. Go ahead and use default for the cutting. Um, the star wheels are these little white things over here. They're spaced across when you're using thinner material. It says to move them aside for the thicker material. With this setup, you can only cut up to about one millimeter, actually a little bit less than a millimeter. If you want to cut thicker material, you'll have to use the Maker series instead of the Explorer series, and you'll have to use their knife attachment instead of their blade attachment. So I have my deep point blade installed, and I just need to follow the instructions on the printer, which is to slide the mat up, press the load button, and then press the print button. So with it done printing, you unload it, and if everything worked correctly, one thing to note, it would look a lot better if I didn't reprint on top of something I already started. That's why there's all these shavings. It's much cleaner when you do it right the first time. And the moment of truth, did it cut through? Oh, of course not. You can see it cut through in some areas. Let's see. It got close. <laughs> My test pieces had good cutting. This one apparently didn't, but here are two gaskets. I actually had, these are thicker material and I actually had to cut them with a knife as well. But I'm done with this project. 
All right, there we have it. How to almost cut gaskets out of gasket material using your Cricut Explore cutter and your CAD software. If you have a more industrial version of the cutter, I'm sure you'll be fine with cutting this out. I did a test piece and had success with cutting the 1 16th stuff you can buy from AutoZone and O'Reilly. I don't know why this one didn't work. Um, it bothers me, but I'm done with this. Thank you for watching. Um, I hope you enjoyed. I hope you learned something. Um, leave comments or questions down in the comment section. If you want to support my channel, there's a short paragraph down in the description you can read. Um, next week, we will be putting the rear axle back together because with these two, I have all the parts I need and I'm done sandblasting and painting. So we'll get to that, I promise. Thank you for watching. I will see you in the next one. Goodbye.